Greetings, I'm your host, Dr. Wolfula, and when I'm not breaking into reality so I can try to kill some actress and her son, I'm here at the Wolfula, reviewing movies. It's been more than a year since I last reviewed a movie starring Freddy Krueger, the festively dressed burn victim with a razor clawed glove to scratch any itch. He enters your dreams and makes them his bitch. I suppose it's gonna be even longer before I review another Freddy movie because the movie I'm reviewing right now is Wes Craven's New Nightmare. Alright, I'm gonna state this right up front. Wes Craven's New Nightmare isn't a Freddy Krueger movie. It's not really a Nightmare on Elm Street movie. New Nightmare is its own thing that happens to have a strong connection to the Nightmare on Elm Street series, but it is not one of those movies. I cannot stress that enough. Your satisfaction with this film hinges upon knowing this crucial information. I'll explain why New Nightmare isn't actually a Freddy movie in a bit, but first, I gotta slog through the obligatory backstory segment of this review. Yay, education. <sighs> In 1984, Wes Craven wrote and directed A Nightmare on Elm Street. Starring Heather Langenkamp as the resourceful heroine Nancy, John Saxon as Nancy's daddy cop, and Robert England in his immortal role as the dream killer Freddy, the movie was rough around the edges, but it was good. Like, really good. Good enough even to be considered a classic horror film. And Freddy Krueger was popular. Five sequels to Nightmare on Elm Street were released. There was a TV series. There were toys made with Freddy's likeness. Yes, even kids love Fred Krueger, which is really fucking ironic if you think about it. By the end of the 80s, though, Freddy was seeing diminishing returns at the box office. When a long-running horror movie series starts to show signs of declining popularity, the studio in charge will have to end it, but they can't just stop. They have to end the series in style so they can make some easy money. So New Line Cinema made their quote-unquote last movie starring Freddy with the declaration in the title that he would finally be killed once and for all with a definitive death. I'd hate to spoil Freddy's dead for you, but Freddy just gets blown up with dynamite unpoetically, and the characters in the movie say that he's definitely dead. Freddy's dead. Oh yeah, Freddy totally can't come back from that. It's not like he hasn't been killed in worse ways. But New Line Cinema seemed serious about the death. There was even a funeral for Freddy. Man, how awkward would it be if you were attending the funeral of a loved one, but you had to wait so that a movie studio could give a fictional child killer a fake funeral for the sake of marketing. Wait, did I say awkward? I mean fucking hilarious! Freddy Krueger's death matters more than any real person's death, and I'm glad that New Line Cinema gets that. Fuck real deaths. Movie deaths are all that matter. So Freddy was dead, unfortunately in pretty much the same way any horror villain is dead at the end of a horror movie. Freddy would officially make his expected return in Freddy vs. Jason 12 years after Freddy's Dead came out, but there were some... developments in between. The 10th anniversary of Nightmare on Elm Street was approaching in 1994, a mere three years after Freddy quote-unquote died. Now, Nightmare on Elm Street is what put New Line on the map, so they're obviously going to want to commemorate the film's birthday in some way. So they went to the guy who started it all to make a new flick with Freddy in its DNA, a movie that's aptly titled Wes Craven's New Nightmare. The story of New Nightmare goes like this. Heather Langenkamp has been having nightmares. Yeah, the Heather Langenkamp that played Nancy in the Elm Street movies is playing herself in this movie. <laughs> Heather's nightmares depict her on the set of a new Nightmare on Elm Street movie, along with her effects artist husband Chase and their little boy Dylan. <laughs> Chase and Dylan. That's so 90s. I don't like that thing. That thing puts bread on our table. Is it alive, Daddy? Heather, you're in Might the next well shot. Be, Dylan. This dream about a nightmare starts to become an actual nightmare when a mechanical Freddy Krueger glove comes to life and starts to kill crew members on the set. Heather's nightmares are followed by earthquakes, and the earthquakes are followed by disturbing phone calls from a stalker who sounds a lot like a certain dream killer. Hello? One, two... Don't smoke, kids. Your voice will sound cool. Freddy's coming for you! So, Heather has been having a tough couple of months. To make matters worse, Chase is off to work on a new effects job, leaving Heather and Dylan alone for a couple of days. Oh yeah, good idea. Leave your wife and small child alone when an obsessed fan of hers is on the loose. God damn it, Chase, this is Mark David Chapman all over again. The recent disturbing events seem to line up with the first Nightmare on Elm Street's 10th anniversary. Remember the Wizard of Oz's 70th anniversary? So many people were killed in that tornado that tore apart Sunset Boulevard. Movie anniversaries are dangerous. 
In recognition of Freddy's birthday, Heather makes a talk show appearance discussing her role as Nancy Thompson in Elm Street 1 and 3. During the interview, Heather is reunited with an old co-star, Robert England in costume, channeling his best scene-stealing goofy Freddy Krueger. This scene is great, I wish it was a lot longer. He may not be all that scary, but the cheesy late 80s version of Freddy Krueger is a lot of fucking fun. You gotta love him. Heather is later called over to New Line Cinema by producer Bob Shea, and the guy asks Miss Langenkamp to reprise her role as Nancy in yet another sequel. I thought you killed Freddy off. Well, we did, but the fans, you know, the fans, God bless them, they're clamoring for more. I guess evil never dies, right? Heather isn't exactly down with the whole thing, but she finds out that Wes Craven is involved with the movie. The reason why Wes is helming another Freddy movie is apparently because he's having new nightmares about Freddy, much like Heather. There is his inspiration for this thing. Anyhow, he's, he's right in the middle of the script. This is some freaky shit, and it doesn't help when Heather discovers that her husband Chase has been working on the new film in secret, constructing the glove from the nightmares. Chase has some serious splaining to do, but his life is cut short in a car crash that may have been caused by a robot claw, but we can only assume that it was probably a totally unrelated robot claw that's still on the loose. If the robot glove does not fit, you must acquit. So Heather is a widow and a single mother now. That sucks. For the fictional version of her, anyway. To make matters worse, the nightmares of Freddy become more intense, and young Dylan starts to act strange. Almost like he's under the influence of a fictional burn victim that was played by that one guy from V. Can Heather keep her life together under these terrifying circumstances? Can she protect her son from this force that has entered their lives? Will she manage to get a movie deal out of this with a cut of the gross profits? Where do dreams end and reality begin? Video games, I suppose. You can probably tell by now that New Nightmare is not your typical sequel. For one thing, it's meta as fuck taking place in the real world, well, kinda, and for another thing, it's different conceptually from the core Nightmare series. The concept of New Nightmare is, what if a monster from a horror movie entered the real world? The monster just happens to be Freddy Krueger, an already established face of horror, but it's not really Freddy at all. Here's where the concept gets a little more complicated. At one point in the movie, Heather pays her old friend Wes a visit regarding the movie he's working on. Wes cuts the shit and explains that the Freddy on the loose in Heather's life is actually an ancient demon that takes the form of whatever is considered an icon of evil. It's existed in different forms at different times. About the only thing about it that stays the same is what it lives for, really. What is that? Oh, the murder of innocence. Look, this is still a script we're talking about, right, Wes? So I can only assume that this demon took the form of Darth Vader at some point before Freddy was created. By making the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, the demon is trapped in the realm of fiction as Freddy, or something. Wes Craven is really fucking vague about how this works. But the problem comes when the story dies, and that can happen in a lot of ways. It can get too familiar to people, or somebody waters it down to make it an easier sell, you know? Or maybe it's just so upsetting to society that it's banned outright. However it happens when the story dies, the evil is set free. To prove that he isn't just going through some midlife crisis, Wes reveals that the script that he's working on mirrors events that actually happened in Heather's life. I'm not completely clear about how the script works. So, Wes Craven is having nightmares, and they're influencing this script, but is this like some kind of That's So Craven situation where the nightmares are visions of the future that are fated to occur, or is he just seeing everything that's happening and writing as he goes along? I guess it's the latter, because Heather apparently has to become Nancy one more time to take on this real-world Freddy, and once he's dead, the script is complete, and they can make another sequel to keep him from coming back for a little while longer. You're gonna have to make a choice. Choice? What kind of choice? Whether or not you're willing to play Nancy one last time. Wes Craven's role in his own movie is just to explain what's going on to Nancy and the audience, but he raises more questions than answers. Whatever, how a fiction demon works isn't that important, I guess. Though, I feel like they should have kept the reason for why Freddy was entering the real world ambiguous like in the original, where they never explain how Freddy came back as a dream killer. Not knowing how a monster is made is scarier than knowing. That's how I feel, at least. The heart of New Nightmare's story is Heather and Dylan's relationship. It's clear early on that Dylan is Heather's whole world and she will do anything to protect him. 
Part of Heather's role as a protector is keeping her son from watching those trashy slasher flicks that she made in the 80s, which eventually translates to Heather having to protect her son from a real-life version of her trashy slasher flicks. <laughs> Considering he was like seven or eight, Miko Hughes does a good job portraying Dylan as a screwed up little boy, but as a character, Dylan is pretty weak and it's hard to form attachment to him. For a great deal of the movie, Dylan is acting weird and demented, doing crazy things, or being paranoid about Freddy coming after him. The movie begins a while after the demon has started showing up in everybody's nightmares, so you don't get to see what Dylan is like as a normal kid. The flick spends a lot of time with Heather and Dylan scenes, but there's something off about the kid in every one of these scenes and you just can't trust the little punk, and you can't care about him all that much. God wouldn't take me. It's easy to care about Heather and feel for her in this tough parental situation, but I didn't have any stake in wanting to see her kid live beyond it being kind of sad when a kid dies in a movie. Kind of, I guess. I drive through a lot of preschools on my way to the grocery store, so I become a bit desensitized to the death and crippling of children. It also doesn't help that Miko Hughes played that fucking kid in Pet Cemetery. Shoulda got Macaulay Culkin. He's just the sweetest little boy. By showing Heather as a parent, though, New Nightmare deals with an interesting subject. How parents working in the horror industry raise their kids without exposing them to what they're fucking doing or did. With Dylan, d does that change your feeling, your perspective about horror movies? No, not really. I mean, would you let him see one of your movies? My son? <laughs> no. Among certain people with sticks up their asses, there's a stigma attached to making horror films. Horror movies are corrupting people, and if you're making them, you're unfit to be a parent. It's the classic blame art for the actions of Psycho shtick. I'm a psycho all on my own, thank you very much. I don't need a movie to help me with that. New Nightmare's outlet for addressing the horror stigma is Dr. Christine Hefner, played by Fran Bennett. Despite sharing the same last name of a dude who runs a porno magazine, Dr. Hefner is not down to clown. You haven't shown him any of the films you've made, have you? The horror stuff? Dr. Hefner is a pediatric psychiatrist that analyzes Dylan near the end of the film. Hefner is handled well as an antagonistic, Nurse Ratched-like character that dislikes Heather's career in horror and believes that this career is a negative influence on Dylan. You have let your child see your films, haven't you? Every kid knows who Freddy is. He's like Santa Claus, or King Kong, or... Yes. Dr. Hefner is easy to hate because she's so damn realistic. The character never crosses a line towards being some Bible-thumping stereotypical loony. No, Hefner is just a normal person with a belief that violence in the media causes problems in real life. And based on how erratic Heather behaves in the film because of that demon, the scorn that Hefner holds against Heather is justified, even though it's wrong. This man from your films, Freddy Krueger, have you been seeing him? No. The only real issue with Hefner is that she doesn't have some conclusion to her character. She's around to raise tension in the final act, but eventually she becomes irrelevant. Freddy doesn't even kill her. Dr. Hefner is just <coughs> gone. I guess that's kind of the big problem with New Nightmare. There's not enough characters tied to the story. New Nightmare is nearly two hours long, which is pretty long for a horror movie. The horror scenes are spread out by a great deal until the last third of the movie. Most of the flick is Heather and Dylan spending time together, which isn't all that great. There's some decent foreshadowing in some of the scenes between Heather and her kid, but they foreshadow the highway scene near the end twice. Right out there, past the freeway, is our home. You know that home isn't far from here, right? Right across the freeway. That's right. New Nightmare really needed more characters to spice things up. Most of the characters in the movie are dudes that can't be involved with the horror shit because they're real people who can't die and you can't have a fucking crowd of people shown surviving at the end of your horror movie, so they just disappear from the plot altogether. Wes Craven especially can't get involved in the actual story because he's not a professional actor, and if he died, then who fucking made the movie I just watched? The actor himself, Robert England, is a huge missed opportunity in New Nightmare. The man has a couple of scenes and then he disappears. Like, he apparently leaves town after painting a picture of Freddy. There is no follow-up with that. Does the demon possess Robert England's body or something? I don't know. I think they'd like to see us together again. In what, a romantic comedy? Just because it's a love story doesn't mean you can't have a decapitation or two. 
Characters just pop in and out of the movie at random when something needs to be established. John Saxon pops in once to give Heather a character to talk to about her problems, and later Saxon pops in again to establish that the barrier between the real world and the film world has been broken. Nancy, pull yourself together before you make yourself and that kid nuts. That's it, though. The guy's gone like everybody else. The only supporting character that actually sticks around in this movie is Dylan's babysitter, Julie, played by Tracy Middendorf. The girl only has a few scenes, though, and she's just a babysitter. Not a whole lot to her. Uh, well, I know what's in that one. Do you have any idea what's in this one? Or what's gonna happen to you when I stick you with it? And I will. <laughs> Heather Langenkamp is left to carry a two-hour-long movie, and she does a good job considering. Whatever you do, don't fall asleep. Langenkamp's performance is the best in this movie, which is weird considering this is a film where Robert England puts on the Freddy makeup, but I don't feel like he brings his A-game. Because of the lack of characters, New Nightmare is lacking as a horror movie. There's only a few deaths, and only one of them is impactful to the story. New Nightmare is like a family drama with dark fantasy elements, really. If you go into New Nightmare expecting it to be another Nightmare on Elm Street movie, but in the real world, you'll be especially disappointed. There are nightmares, but they're not the focus. They're more of a side effect that comes with a demon pretending to be Freddy entering the real world. The nightmares are more cerebral, not so much scary. Then there's the demon posing as Freddy. Miss me. The villain of New Nightmare isn't Freddy. Apparently Freddy doesn't have anything on this demon. Like I said early on, Robert England shows up as Freddy to establish what Freddy had become. The Bart Simpson of horror movie icons. Freddy was more of a merry mischief maker than a dark, evil force. This is intended to contrast with the real Freddy that shows up later. The demon in nature is closer to what Freddy was supposed to be. An evil presence with a very dark, disturbing sense of humor. Yes. <laughs> I touched him. The demon certainly has an ominous flair to him early on by causing all the earthquakes, but he doesn't really do anything all that bad compared to the Freddy from the movies. In fact, the demon may look bigger and badder, but he is a total pushover compared to the actual Freddy. The guy can barely hold his own in a fight with a mother and her small child, and he has fucking powers and shit. What's wrong with him? This demon is the least threatening, threatening looking thing ever. It's like having the build of Arnold Schwarzenegger and the constitution of Urkel. Ever played Skin the Cat? So, Freddy and the Nightmares are a bit, uh, disappointing, but if you're a fan of the series, New Nightmare is an anniversary film that does a good job paying tribute to the original. There are a lot of little references to the first flick all throughout New Nightmare, and it's cool seeing so many people involved with the series playing themselves, except Johnny Depp. New Nightmare is the movie equivalent of a cast in a play bowing at the end of a great performance. Only a bit more entertaining than that. The amount of tribute paid in New Nightmare can get in the way of creativity, though. One of the deaths stick out in my mind because it was just the ceiling death from the first movie. It's excessive to pay tribute to something to the point where you're just repeating stuff that's already been seen. I'm gonna go on a bit of a digression here, but watching New Nightmare recently, I couldn't help but get a Stephen King vibe from the story. The flick is about a writer who created a monster that becomes real. The monster's true form is some ancient demon that's existed since the beginning of time. The main character is a normal mother who recently lost her husband and is caught in the middle of all this crazy bullshit while she's trying to pick up the pieces. The child in the movie is a demented little boy. Whether or not Wes Craven was influenced by Stephen King while coming up with New Nightmare, the resemblance to Stephen King's writing is still uncanny. Alright, let's get into the more technical aspects of the movie. New Nightmare isn't effects heavy, especially compared to the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. A lot of the movie is Heather Langenkamp dealing with parental nightmares, and there's some good scenes covering that, like Dylan climbing up a huge jungle gym rocket thing, or whatever. The early nightmare sequences are much more subtle, like a casket that leads into a deeper casket to hell, and sequences like this are effective and carry meaning. When Freddy gets more active though, the effects start to go off the rails a bit. The best example of this is seeing Freddy out in space above some awkwardly spliced in clouds with a big romantic moon behind him. The shot looks like something straight out of a Goosebumps episode. Then there's the set design. There's only one nightmare world at the end, and it doesn't look that surreal. The place just looks like Atlantis the Lost Empire on fire, and it looks so small. I know Freddy is an ancient demon in this movie, but why does his nightmare world look like a Greek temple of the gods? Visually, I have mixed feelings about this Freddy. I like the black overcoat, even if it looks a little too Columbine in retrospect. 
and I like the idea of streamlining Freddy's look, but at the same time, it looks a bit too cartoony without all the chaotic details and the scarring. The organic style glove looks nice, though I can't not think of Lord Zed when I look at it. It is cool how they base this glove on the one from the first movie's poster. The green fedora is going a little too far to have a uniform color scheme. The padding on Robert England to make the demon look big is too obvious, and I prefer Freddy to look thin and gangly. This Freddy just isn't very scary looking, but he looks cool in an action figure sort of way. I'd collect him. I don't feel like the costume fits well with the more realistic tone that New Nightmare is aiming for. Spoiler alert, I'm giving away the end of New Nightmare. Either keep watching, skip to the time code, or get the fuck out. Eventually, Freddy has entered the real world in full, alters reality in the world of the first film and abducts Dylan to use as bait for Heather. Heather finally embraces her role as Nancy and enters Freddy's world for a face-off. In practice, it just amounts to Heather and Dylan running around, kicking the shit out of Robert England. Eventually, they just trick the demon into going inside an oven, and Freddy starts to do his cover of Burning Up by the Jonas Brothers, revealing his true form. That's pretty much it. The demon loses with very little fanfare. I know that this is a Hansel and Gretel reference with Freddy being the witch. This death was foreshadowed, but it's only slightly better than that stupid fucking dynamite death in Freddy's Dead. This is the lousy thing about the demon. It doesn't really have any rules established for it. Freddy had rules. You could only kill him in the real world, so you had to pull him out kicking and screaming. Even then, Nancy still had to set elaborate traps to make sure he didn't try to pull any shit. In New Nightmare, not only can you kill the demon in his own world, you can also probably just kill him any way you want. So Heather, in theory, could have just gone to sleep holding a gun and just shot the demon in the face. End of movie. Just because you make a death a literary reference, it doesn't exactly excuse it from... not making sense. How is Freddy all that similar to the witch from Hansel and Gretel anyway? Because they both can die in a fire? Guess what, I can die in a fire too. Not to brag or nothing. I'm just deep like that. Heather and Dylan escape from the demon's exploding tourist attraction by jumping into some water, and the two wind up back home, safe and sound. Somehow. Also, Wes Craven apparently broke into their house while they were gone, because the script for the movie they just lived is in Dylan's bedroom. Maybe Wes Craven is implying that he's God. That's what I'd do if I wrote myself into a movie. Heather then reads the script to her son, without thinking about how awkward it'll get reading out loud the details regarding the death of Dylan's father. It's not exactly as touching as the music wants you to think it is. Then the man lays one trembling hand flat upon the table, and with his other picks up a thick, sharp blade. Wes Craven's New Nightmare isn't a bad movie. It's actually pretty good for what it is, and it's a creative concept for a film. It's just not that great as a horror movie or as a movie connected to the Nightmare on Elm Street series. New Nightmare is its own weird movie. There's some dull stretches, but there's some cool stuff too. New Nightmare is an early attempt at metafiction in horror movies, and Wes Craven went on to direct less complicated meta-horror movies with the Scream series, written by Kevin Williamson, which happened to start a year after New Nightmare came out. So, if you're a fan of Scream, you're more likely to be satisfied by New Nightmare than if you're more of a Nightmare on Elm Street fan. New Nightmare is kind of a rough draft for the Scream series in that way, but Freddy's still here, and there's some neat references too. I give Wes Craven's New Nightmare a Wes Craven's Shocker out of Wes Craven's Old Nightmare. I wonder what kind of nightmares Wes Craven was having when he directed Vampire in Brooklyn. Do you have a pass? Screw your pass. It's alright. Ms. Langenkamp.